Hey guys and gals, it's uh, Jim here, and um, before I get ready to start uh, doing any more uh, masking and painting, I um, I saw this on a, another video by uh, Boyd over at Checkworks, and that uh, these two side port and starboard marker lights uh, and stuff. Um, he uh, he noticed after he got it all assembled. There's little plastic uh, inserts that go in in those inside of those and all that. And um, there's no way that you can really light block a certain part of it and all that. The way this model is designed and made. And if you notice, there's that uh, that uh, inner part, that front nose piece on the bottom. That just sets on top in there, and there's a gap all the way around. Well, that gap isn't an issue because when you put the the top piece on, that's going to fill in, you know, cover that gap, so you won't have nothing shining out. But um, where those two little clear pieces go, and if you get it all closed up and, you'll, and you're lighting your model, you're going to get a red and green shining shining down through there onto this uh, this front piece and stuff. So... Um, I was thinking about that. Okay, how could you cover that? You can't really get in there with the toothpick and put some tulip in there and stuff. It's a too tight of a space. And I don't want light, you know, red and green shining down on this nose piece and that. Um, but basically the solution I came up is, uh, just taking a small piece of, uh, small diameter wire, looping it down through the top or the bottom, whatever you want to call it. And um, if you kind of, I don't know if I can, I can pick it up, but if you kind of, if you can kind of notice um, the way it's made, you loop it around, there's that, that, that inset there, you just pull it taut around there and it's going to block light from shining through the bottom of the clear piece out onto where you don't want light shining and stuff like that. So that's the solution I came up with, you know. Maybe it doesn't matter to some people. It'll look like a little uh, kind of a red and green floodlight shining down onto this front part of the hall. But, um, you know, I didn't want that. It doesn't uh, show show it like that in any of the, uh, the still shots I took from the movie and all that. So, um, basically, that's what I that's the solution I came up with light blocking at. It's just uh, fishing a piece of uh, small diameter wire through there like that. And then I'll take and uh, super glue the ends and stuff and then cut them, cut them flush with that ledge on there. So that way, the, once I glue the top part, after I get everything buttoned up, uh, it'll be nice and flush like it should be and stuff. But um, it's 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 just the way they, they molded it and stuff and the way this part fits in. And you can't really assemble the clear parts in that um, beforehand. Um, because of the way this piece fits in there and stuff like that. Another thing, uh, if anybody's curious, um, I just put, I usually, when I build a model that I'm going to light and I'm going to put it on a base, I usually start out with a small piece of brass tubing that fits into the piece of tubing on my base and all that. Um, basically what I do, I build a little box around it and um use five minute epoxy and uh really goop it in there and stuff pretty heavy that way i got a nice solid support uh when i did my refit that whole front part of the uh secondary hull um i probably got about an inch deep of uh five minute epoxy in there because that's a weak spot if the model um, you know moves around uh it has a tendency because it's front and back heavy and you move it or something even if it's on a pretty stout rod the model itself might uh you know sway a little bit and that's an easy um easy place where it could crack the, the styrene so i really um i really made that one nice and solid and stuff and um I built up a dam in there. That part of the model, the secondary hall, the bottom half is probably almost pretty much solid. Um, and then also what I did to strengthen up the seam, I took some five minute epoxy with some strips of uh, uh, sprue and pretty much just glued them over the seam like that with the five minute epoxy and that gives it some extra strength too and stuff. Yeah, I mean, once you get it together, you know, it's it, you can squeeze it now, but once you get together, you're not going to squeeze it, but it gives it some added strength and everything. So, basically, uh, that's about it. But that's the solution I came up 
with to um, keep any uh, unwanted light from shining through the bottom of that gap onto the uh, the nose piece and stuff like that of the pontoon. So um, just thought I'd share that quick tip with you guys. You know, like I says to me, I don't want the light shining through there like a like a like a you know effect like it's a. Uh, Highlighted or something even though the, I'm, I'm not gonna have a uh, blinking uh, uh, Running navigation lights the only lights that'll be blinking are the strobes uh, It's that's more screen accurate than the navigations blinking. They weren't blinking in the movie um, I don't know about the, um, the next generation or generations. Maybe they lit it up differently, but in this case I'm doing the um, um, The Grissom from uh, Star Trek 3 so uh, they weren't blinking in any, any of the uh, shots in the movie when I watched videos and stuff on that. So um, basically, that's uh, that's what I got going on. So um, it'll be a while before I do the next video because I'm uh, doing some, uh, going to be doing a lot of painting. You know, just the uh, the base color and stuff, the light gray over the next couple of days. Um, right now, I don't think I'll be doing any painting for a couple of days, two, three days now because... We're going to have the heat index indexes up near 100, and um, even though I got the air going in the house, you still get that dampness, and things just don't want to dry properly and stuff, you know, and I don't want any issues. I like to paint something one shot, and that's it, and I'd have to re-sand it and repaint it because uh, uh, moisture uh, affected it or anything like that, so, so I'm just working on little piddly stuff like this for the time being and all that, so... Till the next time, uh, everybody take care. Have a good one. Stay safe out there. Thanks to all my subscribers. Thanks to all my new subscribers. Thanks to um, all my uh, all, all the comments you guys been leaving me. Thanks for hitting the like button. And I'd like to give a shout out to uh, Donuts in Space. He's um, rebuilding his um, um, enter not the Enterprise, the uh, the Voyager. He's doing a rebuild on that with all the brass photo etch and everything, and He's doing a pretty good knockout job and everything, and takes a lot of patience to actually tear something apart that you already built and redo it and everything, but uh, it's coming along pretty nice and everything, and he's been checking out my videos lately on this here, so I thought I'd give him a shout out and go over and check out the, the work he's doing over on that Voyager and everything like that, so, and it's the old, uh, the large scale Voyager, it's not the new 1000 scale from round two. So, um, anyway, till the next time, everybody take care, have a good day, rest of the week, and, uh, stay cool out there if you're in the heat zones, and, uh, take care of yourselves if you're in the flood zones, or they're getting all the rain and everything constant and everything, and, um, we'll talk to you soon, bye.